believe that. <laughs> Your most gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you today and we just thank you for the privilege of taking care of our people. Guide and lead us in our decision making today and we give you all the blessings. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Roll call. I got another one. Thank you. I'd like to ask for approval of minutes of April 15th. Make a motion they be approved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Reports, Marsha Lamb. Good afternoon. Hey, Marsha. I don't have anything really to do to a report, but I do like to remind you that uh, at the end of this month, our clothing voucher will end. So please uh, remind your constituents out there to uh, come in or get in touch with us or return their documents. Okay. okay. Mayor. Marsha, I don't know if this was to your department or or another department or if it was it not any any of your all's departments. But would was the uh, SNAP cards to your any your department? Huh? I think that was public health. Or was it public health? Who dispensed those? Do you know? Might be it's might be weak. I don't know. I don't really know. Uh, you know, the, the USDA is not funding the summer uh, electronic benefit transfers for children. It was a grant that wasn't renewed. Do you all know any? Do you all know what program that was? I mean, that's health. It was health. health. They had it was the it was the food program. It's through our health. They just our health. Just tribal and non-tribal members. I know it wasn't. It was a pilot. It was a pilot. It was a pilot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was it like a three-year? Yeah, it was a demonstration project. Yeah, yeah I knew that was. I was just wondering how many of our kids, but we'll have to get that then through the health committee. Well, I asked but for a, public health. I, I asked for a financial assessment what it was going to, how it's going to affect. Now, Todd, you got some information on that? Yes, sir. I was just going to add that. Oh, good. Um, it is through the health department and uh, public health group. To public health, yeah. They have, uh, our grants management department has requested a briefing to figure out why. Uh, but to the best of our knowledge at this point, it was a pilot program. They were looking for new innovative services rather than uh, existing services. Um, but they are trying to find out exactly why we didn't, uh, weren't considered for that. There were quite a few other tribes that were not awarded in this funding cycle, as well as the state of Texas was not awarded in this funding cycle as well. Um, but what was the question? I'll see if I can get Oh, would you let them know? Because I think next month we'll, they'll be reporting to, uh, uh, at committee for us. Would you ask them that we would like to know if they can share with us what happened on that? Sure. Thank you so much. Well, guess what? You don't have to report to us. I learned something new here every there day. You go. <laughs> well, I was just wondering if you might have had a backup plan on anything to that. But. No. Well, thank you so much anyway. Mm -hmm. Next question. Well, that was good. Thank you, Marsha. <laughs> oh, uh, Nikki Baker has some gifts from me that she's going to distribute. Diane's Martha Ketcher, Community Services. Uh, consistent with the previous reports, this report period continues to highlight the activities of our youth. Our youth activities we conducted was 12 events where we served 223 youth across seven of our, our communities. We also served ten, had 10 adult activities across 11 communities and uh, that comprised of 83 <coughs> participants. I was really pleased to see and report that we had 52 parents that supported our youth activities this report period, getting involved and engaged with their youth. 
Uh, our partnerships forged this month included uh, the environmental health protection where we are where we presented and engaged in events for the festival they had at the NSU. We also <coughs> participated in the Shady Grove uh, Learning Center with events and activities there, Prior High School and Salina. <coughs> this, uh, uh, this report period, we engaged more with this uh, Cherokee Nation Opioid Task Force, where our department presented at that event. and. Um, uh, forged new partnerships with Sam Bradshaw and the behavioral health component where as, as a result of that relationship we were able to uh, obtain like 73, 73 uh, lock boxes for our adult treatment, uh, not, I keep saying adult treatment, adult resident programs where we could hand out those lock boxes to protect their medications as, as well as uh, disposal pouches so they could properly dispose of their medications. So, we're making ourselves available to the LPI task force to uh, help uh, educate and participate in uh, prevent, preventing uh, misuse of opioids. <coughs> our, um, our OEH and E department, I'm happy to report that we received official notice of our award for $3 million for housing support. Uh, we're still waiting on the regular housing uh, notification of funds. Uh, our department is also busy uploading the SDS. It's that time of the year where we upload the uh, projects for SDS for the 2020 projects. And uh, you have the stats before you, but I want to uh, go into more granular um, details to spotlight all that they engage in. They trained 195 food handlers, 14 existing sewer and water facilities, repaired. They installed 32 new sewer and uh, water facilities and performed 33 drinking water tests and, and existing well assessments and 21 site evaluations. Uh, the IHS continues to utilize the expertise of our staff where Billy was asked to present at the TSGAC, the Tribal Social Governance Advisory Committee, as well as the Facilities Advisory Board regarding our comments on the consultation of the revision of the policy. <clears throat> Our, um, also as well as the Rural Community Assistance Partnership. I continue to keep a finger on the pulse of our financial performance of the community services. I can assure you that all the departments are performing well and are well within budget. In fact, we're anticipating a 73% underrun. This is primarily due to the multi-year projects of the uh, Cherokee Nation Department of Transportation as well as environmental health. Those are long range projects where the funding extends over multiple years to complete those projects. So that is nothing uh, new or significant. <clears throat> I am continue, wor continue working on the 2020 and reviewing the 2020 budgets for 125 million presentation. We completed the narratives today. Uh, another focus I am paying attention to is the success succession planning. Uh, the, our initial assessment of oeh &E reveals over 54% of our employees in our oeh &E department are either eligible for retirement or within five years of retirement. So we're looking at that and looking at it across the board in community services to see what we can do in prepare, preparation for succession planning. That involves um, assessing what those critical positions are and developing a training plan to make sure that uh, services are uh, uh, and we're taking advantage of the experts that are available now. <coughs> we are uh, revamping our administrative SharePoint <coughs> sites to, to take advantage of our technological tools and, uh, and advancing our skills in community services administration. Um, we're working with Alan Hefner on our updating our website information. Um, our stretch goals, I'm really proud of the stretch goals with our um, Community <coughs> Services Department, our youth adult uh, programs are uh, expanding services without additional resources, although they are taking, as I mentioned before, the grants training to improve the funding streams within that department and to expand upon services by just the partnerships that we have forged. In addition to that, our oeh &E department has uh, uh, has implemented stretch goals or, or renewed or, or re-implemented uh, programs that they had in the past. One example is the rabies program and they uh, have 
obtained 40, 40 voucher, 400 vouchers and, and have issued approximately 100 vouchers for, for free vaccinations. And that, that sum is a summation of our report for this month. Do you have any questions? <coughs> any questions? Yeah, I have one. Uh, you were talking, how many lock boxes did you say? Uh, right now we've obtained uh, 48 and um, we're hoping to get 75 is what they, they, may, they mentioned, 75 lock boxes for the <coughs> handout to our adult residents. How do those work? Would you just explain to us? Uh, they, um, it's a place to secure their medication is all that that is and to, to lock them up. Uh -huh. Does it, are, the, are the people, are, the, are, are, are your guests responsible for those or are the employees responsible for those? They just hand them out to the community members that participate in our events. It's a one way of reaching out and it's distributing supplies to them. Those pouches for proper disposal <coughs> is also um, uh, something that not everybody has, so they're taking advantage of, of obtaining those, those pouches as well. We want to have uh, <coughs> speakers to come out to educate on uh, further protection and, not, and expanding their knowledge on protecting their medications and um, what, the, what the consequences are of when they share medications. Are the boxes, I mean, are they huge? I mean, can anyone just walk off with one or are they secured? <coughs> I believe that they're secured. I haven't actually <coughs> used one or. Um, I mean, I mean, are they attached to a building or are they attached to a wall? Or something? They can attach them. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, on the rabies voucher, how do you go about getting those vouchers? I would contact Billy Hicks. Okay, and then is there an income guideline on something like that? I don't believe so. I haven't heard of any income. <coughs> Billy's here. No, no, there's no income. Those are really good. Uh, that's a good program. Uh, the rabies vaccine. Uh, on, their, on our housing support fund, do we have any idea on how much that's going to be on housing? Three million. Okay. Good deal. Thanks, sir. Just to circle back to your question last month, Harley, you had mentioned, uh, you had questioned the CHR funding. CHR funding. We still receive that funding. It goes into to support the general support of Office of Environmental Health and Engineering as well as their uh, personnel costs. Although uh, you are well aware that the 2020 President's budget is proposing to eliminate that program uh, as well as health education. Yeah, I knew that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's time to go. Gary Cooper's on his way to D.C., so we'll have to accept <coughs> his report. Michael Lynn. Good afternoon. Michael. You've got a copy of our report? Uh, that we submitted. Uh, but just to get, hit a few project highlights. Uh, we had, had a uh, public meeting for the Lion Switch project over in Adair County on May 2nd. Uh, we presented the community with plans uh, that were 60 70 percent complete in design. Uh, we had a large representation of landowners uh, through, along the road project, and the um, uh, project was received very well for the most part. Uh, we also uh, submitted or, or handed out public comment forms for the community to take home with them and send back to us with, yes, with uh, self-addressed stamped envelopes. Those comments are due back to us May 31st. Uh, we'll take those comments and evaluate them and uh, make any changes that we deem necessary to the plans. Uh, Oak Ridge Road in Adair County got to, uh, some questions on that last month. Uh, engineers completed all the easement and exhibits for the right-of-way and utilities that have been received. Uh, those have been received by our office. Uh, Project plans are approximately 70% complete right now. Uh, the Dwight Mission Road, uh, which is nor uh, the por portion north of I-40, Sequoia County, uh, utility relocation is underway, uh, and currently ODOT, that's a project that we're working with the county and Oklahoma Department of Transportation on, ODOT has that scheduled for a contract letting in uh, August of this year, August of 2019. Uh, the Ross Street project located here in Tahlequah leading down to the health clinic uh, is a, a 
on schedule, uh, working on a curb elevation issue that we had run into on the curb that had been placed on the north side of the road. Uh, we've worked through that issue uh, with the contractor. They should be, be uh, begin placing additional curb on the south side of the road this week, and they're also backfilling the curb that's been placed and uh, pouring the concrete basis for the overhead street lighting. Uh, the Northeast Fort Gibson project, uh, running between uh, Muskogee and Cherokee counties, uh, had the recent rains that we've had has caused, uh, caused some delays out there, but they are working on the bridge columns right now. Uh, they've got the, uh, those pl uh, placed and they're in, uh, working on getting them, uh, the columns ready to pour. Uh, and they're also uh, placing uh, concrete drainage structures through a, a big fill area that, they've, that they're placing in uh, right now. Uh, lastly, I wanted to mention the Leach Kenwood project. Uh, that project, we're still waiting on guardrail installation, uh, signs, and general cleanup. And I know last month there were some questions that came up about the contract and where we were at, and I have that information here I'd like to, I'd like to discuss. Um, that project was, uh, as, as we probably know, was awarded to Glover and Associates out of Muskogee. Uh, the original contract was for 180 days. Uh, the notice to proceed was issued on August 15th of 2016. Uh, as of today, uh, May 13th, as of today, uh, the cumulative days used on the project is 1,001 days, 1,001. Uh, the contract amount, uh, no change orders have been issued. Uh, the contract amount as it was originally, when it was originally opened, was $3,940,412.19. Uh, we have paid 23 pay estimates on this. Uh, the last estimate that we paid was June 30th of 2018. Uh, and the cumulative amount paid to the contractor is $2,969,114.62. Uh, that leaves the remaining balance that the nation still has here in our, in our possession, in our accounts, of $971,297.57. Uh, so, with that being said, that's uh, that's the amount of monies. Now we they have they have continued to do some work. Uh, they we, we have uh, uh, we have paid estimates uh, pay estimates for 24 uh, through through 32. Uh, but we they have done some work, although we haven't paid for it. Uh, when I had a conversation with with the uh, vice president back in June, uh, and told him we just need to get the project wrapped up. Uh, before any future payments or any further payments were made uh, that's and that's the goal that we're working towards now I did talk to him last week and he mentioned that the guardrail was behind due to weather I personally called the guardrail company responsible for that project to ensure that I was being told what I was being told was accurate and it, it was I talk, talked to the company owner of the guardrail company and he, he confirmed that it was due to weather on other projects. He is not the delay of this project, the ultimate delay of this project, but we are waiting on him to get out there to get the guardrail installed. With that, Mr. Chair, that is my uh, report, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. Charles. Mr. Lynn, <clears throat> so they have the potential of making the whole contract amount. Like we have 900 something thousand. Mm -hmm. Paid them 2 million. <coughs> 2.9 million, roughly, just under 3 million, yes, sir. So but they have the potential of getting that 900 and something thousand. At this point, probably not because we've still got, we've got the liquidated damage right. days that, right. that, that okay. are in there. So we'd have to, I'm sure there'll be some kind of negotiation process in the end once the project is complete and uh, we'll have to d d assess how many days they'll be charged. Right, because they're charged so many days after the... After the contract, after the original 180, they're charged per day, yes. Another question I had on the line switch road, Kane and I know some families down there, mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're homeowners that some of their land's gonna get taken, some of their yard. Mm -hmm. So the papers you mentioned, uh, like the suggestion type papers, mm -hmm. um, that's what their first step should be. Yes, definitely. Now, are those, are those uh, sure enough considered? Yes, most definitely, most definitely. Okay. And, uh, you know, I told her I had all the faith in the world in you and might get together and visit sometime, but that's her first step is those papers. Yes. Okay. One last thing. I know we don't own cats, right? Correct. We, we contract with them. We contract with them and, you know, we've got a little say-so and mm -hmm. some things. Mm -hmm. Been visiting with the folks at Westfield. I've got a nine-year-old 
elder up there. And they, they do, cats, they do come to Westfield. And they, cats have been good to work with. But oh, I'd like you to think about making, if, if it's even possible, I don't, and again, and we don't own the company, mm -hmm. but they have a hard time, um, you know, if they need to just run to the store or something where, you know, closer to the headquarters, it's, it's not that difficult. But can, you, can you check on something maybe about Westfield for me? Sure, sure. I do, I do know they have a, a dispatch unit and vehicle storage in Stillwell. Right. Which is what the you know, ideally it would be, you know, maybe some located in you know, Westfield and maybe closer to Watts or I don't know their, their area that they cover okay. really. Yes, thank you. I'll definitely check into it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Walkins, Councilman. <coughs> Michael, so the project's 821 days overdue of the original 180-day contract. What's the what's the penalty per day? The penalty, according to the contract, is $1,000 per day, and uh, we call liquidated damages. Uh, so <coughs> that's approximately 800, $821,000. That they're that's just the liquidated damages. So since this this company Glover and Associates put us in a bind, and, and of course there's going to be negotiations because you guys plan them finishing <coughs> down the road. Question is is the one the thing that concerns me the most is being one of the leaders in the Cherokee Nation is having business dealings with with these folks that. That, that just do half fast work, okay. And then they go and they change their company up, they change their name of the company, H&G, and then we're, we're, we're giving them awards on other projects that are Cherokee Nation. What kind of precedents are we setting in the Cherokee Nation with our vendors? And why are we awarding people for doing work halfway. <coughs> like who's who's allowing these tarot bids to be accepted when we know what's happening and someone needs to be held accountable. I don't know who it is, but it's we, we don't need to be doing business uh, with folks that aren't gonna be doing a great job for our Cherokee people that travel those roads that walk in those buildings and it's just uh, a little bit disturbing and you probably don't have anything to do with it but whoever is accepting these bids needs to be held accountable and uh, you guys may be aware of it but uh, I don't know it's a uh, it's troubling to hear so that that's all I'm gonna say thank you chair you're welcome, Harley. Yeah, Michael, I think you've answered uh, most of the questions on the project over there that we're talking about at Leach Kenwood. Mm -hmm. uh, I take it just so I'm straight, but you've, you've uh, retained nine, $971,000. That's correct. And so some of the liquidated damage is going to be taken for nine seventy one, and then you'll negotiate the rest of it. Yes, that's the intent. Yes, sir. And I think that's 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 why you retain the five percent. You know. Well, that's have your insurance on the thing. Yeah, the five percent is in the nine seventy one. But yeah, we retain five percent of every contract payment. Sure. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, and I, and just to follow up on what Council Walkintick said about awarding those contracts and what I understand they were therefore bids on that particular job and this guy was a high bidder and the other guy was a low bidder. The high bidder got to come back in and rebid, as I understood. Which job are we talking about? Uh, the parking lot. That is that is not accurate at all. Is that right? No, sir. That is not accurate at all. Can you explain then what went on? Yes. The, uh, we held a, uh, pub, bids were submitted. All bids were submitted. We held a public bid opening. Uh, the uh, bid, as read bid was uh, uh, a, a low bid from a different vendor. Uh, when when uh, the uh, contracts and procurement department uh, began evaluating the bids and the numbers that were submitted. 
the unit price multiplied by the quantity didn't tally up properly. Uh, they, uh, they, they, uh, once the contract specifications that we use in the department, which follow uh, uh, ODOT, Oklahoma Department of Transportation's uh, contract specifications and standards, uh, states that unit price trumps. So whatever that, if there is a calculation error, there's a standard or a policy to go by. And unit price is what would, we've manually calculated out and corrected the miscalculation. They became low bid. There was no, there was no rebid at all. So, so they met, just made a mistake on the calculations on their unit price? Yes. At, on their, on not, not their unit price. The unit price was correct. They made a calculation error on their total price, the total on the, as they tallied it across to the total cost. So what the unit cost? It was the total. The unit cost is what we went with. Was, was that was a unit price multiplied by the quantity? Okay. Well, that explains it a little bit better. Then. Okay, because I was under the impression it was a different thing. Yeah. Okay. The other question I had is on, on the Piney Bridge here in Delaware County. I know I got involved with that at first, and then we kind of let it drop. But are we going to do anything to help the county on that, or why? Why? Why aren't we going to do anything? We've had a couple meetings up there. Uh, at this point, I don't know that we've been requested to do anything. The last meeting we had, they were trying to seek FEMA, FEMA funding, and I think he's been successful in getting that. I can't really say for sure because I haven't been overly involved in the application process, but uh, he was trying to seek FEMA f uh, assistance uh, because of that disaster. That's the last word that I got. I know it's being designed. I know the county's got it under design right now. I, I called him the other day, but I couldn't get in contact with him just to find out where he is. Right. Okay. All right. Not, not answering my question. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yes, we, need, we need to uh, tighten up our tarot language because if we're going to allow someone else to owe the tribe money to go and rebid on a job in the Cherokee Nation, we need to get some type of safeguards or language in place in our tarot law to be sure that this isn't this isn't going to repeat down down the road in the future. You know what I'm saying? It's <clears throat> just, uh, I mean. Well, we discussed that with David Moore earlier in committee. If these people are bidding, even though they're tarot certified, if they're not providing us quality work, we have the discretion to to not give them the bid, correct? We, yeah, that's a, I believe the policy states most reasonable, responsible bidder. Yes. So going to award it to. So who's, who's over accepting these bids? My the project was, was, was awarded through uh, Cherokee Nation Procurement Department. I mean, they, they handled all the bidding processes. Who's over their procurement department? I get the treasurer. Lacey Horn? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. I suppose that's correct. I, yeah. I'm kind of guessing, but I suppose she's over that. Well, I'm, I'm just, I kind of walked in late and just got, kind of got the tail end of it, but I'm of the same opinion. I, you know, I think if somebody does uh, work like they've done on this road and they don't complete it in a timely manner, we should not give them any more bids until that project's completed. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that's right. Even if they change their name and we know it's that same company, we shouldn't do that. Um, I think we need to, and we need to change maybe some the way our tarot uh, is worded on that. But uh, that's you know, we shouldn't reward people. With more money, who, who uh, does that kind of work? When we put our trust in them that they are going to do this in a timely manner, and they're going to and they're going to stick to their contract like they say they are going to, and then they blatantly don't. I don't think we should reward them at all for that. That's just that's my opinion. I just don't think we should. If if this comes under either Joe uh, excuse me, rules or finance, I forget mm -hmm. which. Probably either. Either one. Uh, we can do that or we can just uh, legislate. You know, it's like if you have a delinquency at a bank, I don't think they'll allow you to go get a, an additional loan. I mean, some of this is common sense. <laughs> hey, Chairman, can, can we yield to our legal counsel? Yes, we can. We Go ahead, Talena. So, currently we, we do have in place, it's in part of the tarot law, there's a debarment list. So... Um, the procurement department that's, that's under finance, they're supposed to come up with policies and procedures to define poor performance of a contractor or employer. That documentation must be available and provided to the contractor upon request. So that's a part of the debar debarment list. So if there's certain 
Um, I don't know if you have that list or if anyone knows of that list. There should be a process for that. And the debarment list is no less than two years. So there is a, there is a current process in place. Michael, are, are you familiar with this process, debarment list? I'm not, oh, not terribly familiar with the Cherokee Nation debarment list. What section so we, is we that, Lena? This would be <clears throat> section eight of Title 40. I think that's employment, under employment. So it's Title 40, Section 8, Section mm -hmm. 1021. Well, it's something worth discussing and looking at. I think we're all in agreement that if somebody's not doing quality work for us, that's, that's, let us do a process here where they don't get any additional bids. I mean, that's kind of a simple request here. All we're asking for is quality work in a timely manner. If the shoe was on the other foot, if we as a tribe had a contract with a non-tribal entity and we were delinquent, I don't think they'd give us additional work. Mike, would you, would you mind uh, begin this process with this particular company? Begin the what process? I, I think that, that, that was, yeah, I think that would come under one of these two yeah. uh, departments. Let our legal Committee. come up yeah. with a recommendation and we'll address it back through rules. Yeah. And, and Lena has touched on something that reminds me there is that debarment yeah. process. And there are also policy guidelines about this thick that uh, the Tayro group drew up when we upgraded the Tayro law. It's in there somewhere and it, it's already. I'm not saying it's taken care of, but it's in these policy guidelines somewhere. And I don't know if it gets lost between one department to the other, probably. But I guess we need to start looking at it. Yeah. Great. And thank you, Glenn. Thank, thank you, Mark. Yes, thank you. Uh, is that a night here? Shay's here. Shay, okay. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry Anna was unavailable this afternoon. Um, you have a copy of our report and I would just like to mention, I think last month I told you all that we received um, the Ross grant from HUD. It's a three-year program. We've hired um, two staff members already that will begin May, 20, May 20th and we've interviewed a third who we've selected. We're waiting on the background check and um, an employment offer to be made, but we're glad to get that program kicked off. Again, May 20th, we'll have staff members located in Jay, Claremore, and Tahlequah. So, other than that, you have a copy of our report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Good report. All right, thank you. Okay. And Nikki Baker and more. ICW. <clears throat> but I wanted to pass out uh, May is National Foster Care Month, and so you have the proclamation that the Chief signed this morning along with just a pen, and the whole point is that we can all do something to further foster care, whether it just be an advocate, um, open our home, support it in some way, educate. Um, so you have a pen if you choose to wear it, and we just would appreciate you always helping us find foster homes. It takes all of us to make sure we take care of our children, so I appreciate each and every one of your effort, and if you have any questions, you have my report. Yes, I would look at your stats. Could you sure. explain these with the uh, Child Protective Services, please? Okay. Um, it looks like our mothers are in trouble. Um, but then at the, at the, uh, under drug, alcohol, abuse, other, you have seven. Drug abuse parent, 92. Is this the entire 14 county area, Nikki? This, this, this is on the tax of the, sure, I'm sorry. It's, it's our entire, four, uh, Cherokee Nation, right? All of our cases are? Yes and no. It oh. does involve the whole jurisdiction, but it's what calls came into Indian Child Welfare. Okay. So okay. the state, of course, also receives referrals on Cherokee children, mm -hmm. and then we also have an intake department. Oftentimes, people are confused as to jurisdiction, and so both of us have to 
across wires and DHS might send us some and say, hey, we got something that happened on tribal land and we often have things that happened on state. So this is just processing the referrals that we received that, that received. month. Okay. And so it's probably not a fair or accurate um, way to determine what's happening on Indian country. It's just what's being reported to, to Indian okay. country through my staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, recently I did a, uh, I was, I, I guess I had too much time on my hands, but I did kind of a analysis of two counties in the, in the Cherokee Nation. Mm -hmm. And um, it, and the report, it you know, the number of people that were arrested, they were female, I did female. Sure. Were the same, they're about the same number. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, the same problems, that's why I looked at this and I'm going, that looks mm -hmm. like, uh, um, some of the things, you know, the drug drug abuse was number one, alcohol two, and then uh, 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 not the, uh, when you steal, uh, 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 embezzlement. Oh, just, okay. That was just a mm -hmm. mixture. But in one county, uh, the um, uh, drug abuse was first, and then uh, alcohol was three. And uh, this county was the women were uh, stealing, embezzling. I thought it was kind of interesting. Sure. I mean, I think I'll hear, do the men next time. Right. <laughs> but this was just the mothers. Sure. Uh, Drug abuse is the highest besides neglect, and neglect is so broad it almost it encompasses every reporting factor because if you're abusing drugs, you're normally neglecting your children. So, um, uh, and I was a little surprised, like uh, you know, like with the domestic violence too. It seems to be, um, of course, that goes back to the the abuse, and mm -hmm. so. Um, but anyway, I thought this was interesting. I, I really hadn't looked at that, but it was um, after some stats I had looked at. It, it kind of it's pretty close to what you're, the reports you're receiving. So anyway, I thought it was interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. You're welcome. Anyone else? Keith? I noticed in this proclamation you say, we acknowledge that our concerted effort to support our Cherokee children and families has increased the number of certified homes by 87. <coughs> 87? That's huge. Yes. That needs to be applauded. Thank you. Because that is, uh, uh, that's extraordinarily hard to find people who are qualified, willing and qualified to do that. For you to find 87. <coughs> We hired a faith-based recruiter. His name is John Roselle. We've expanded that department. Um, we have worked uh, in collaboration with the state of Oklahoma through the CARE portal. And so our department together as a whole, my staff have beat the doors of almost everyone in every church and just trying to get the message out there. So, so I employ some wonderful staff members that have a passion for children and they do wonderful work. Am I reading that right? There's 195 that have been certified. And 87 have been in the last year. Yes. That, that's just a huge jump, and, and that's, that needs to be recognized. And I'm glad that's on the hair, because uh, um, my family's grown because of uh, these things, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the effort you've put in. Thank, Thank you. you. If you ever attend community meetings, Indian Child Welfare is usually there, and there's usually two staff or so, so if you have any other questions, they'd be glad to uh, probably talk your ear off about it. So, I'll say like one more thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilor. Oh, uh, I just want to thank you. Uh, it's, it's not my baby, but someone I I know. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. Uh, just national statistics: 50% have to end up in adoption. That's a nationwide, and 50% get to return. We always want to return our children to family if ever possible. This we provide adoption. Sure, sure. Yep. But I just I want you to know that. You're welcome, but it's also a tragedy. At mm -hmm. the same time, it is a celebration because some family wasn't able to get it together. But at the end of the path, if that couldn't happen, we're so happy that a loving family is able to take care of our children. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chairman. What's the, is the Macintosh home, is it up and going? June 7th is their um, opening day. Um, I was contacted this morning. They're supposed to notify me as soon as they have an actual flyer. I'd be glad to provide that. Um, so there will be like a ribbon cutting slash opening uh, June the 7th. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to report that they, that family has already taken all of our Cherokee children out of group homes um, because they have a passion to work with older children. And as we receive more in, they have a few openings ready for us when, when that happens. And I hate to say when, but we take anywhere from zero to 13 children into custody a month. 
and um, there are older children that do come every year. So the, I know, I know we visited a couple years ago, and you, you were talking about you know group homes uh, aren't aren't as effective as uh, more more of a one on one uh, parent foster child relationship. Has has something changed between two years ago and now, as far as research and stuff goes, or? The McIntosh home is not a group home. It is a foster home in a large home. Because they have six bedrooms, they can't. They have the room for more children, but they still don't go past state and federal regulations and guidelines for what's acceptable within a home. Which so is, they are not a group home. They are a foster home. Is there a cutoff home. as far as a uh, other group home, the, the number of kids that's in there? The rule, and I, I'll have to get this to you because it's just recently changed in the last couple of months. DHS has changed it, but I believe it is six foster children and then it's the rule changes how many of your own children you have versus if you have no children so i apologize i don't have that memorized but there because there's been some changes here in the last couple of months but the rule is based off of how many children you already have and then how many foster children and i think the rule changed to where they now no longer even want to count your own biological children and only count the um foster children, but I believe the number is six in regards to foster children. So a group home will have 20, 30, 40, 50. Laura Dester shelter was closed in Tulsa. So no, the stats keep getting stronger and stronger that children do not thrive in group homes, but in home-like settings with mothers and fathers and that type of atmosphere. This and the not. state or federal government will not provide funding for group homes for the Cherokee Nation or for state to certify foster homes. They have to be specific, labeled a certain group, and that is how they're funded, but they are very, very limited, and it's usually for specialized care. So like children who sexually act out, they go to a group home type setting for treatment. Children that like are autistic or things of that nature, they usually go more of a behavioral health type group home. So group homes are made for specialized services for children, not the average child who simply was removed due to no issue of their own. So this one, this one's going to host 13. Is that correct? I can't say exactly, and I'll have to get but, back but with that, you on that's that. The max. That's the we max. We will follow hosts. federal and state guidelines in regards to always following the law in regards to that. But they, the reason why it's such a priority and why I'm so happy to partner with them is they have a heart for teenagers. And if I provided you almost all of my home studies, I have maybe one or two that will accept teenagers. It is a rarity that somebody will accept teenagers. And so to have a home that large that will accept teenagers is, is next to none. We don't have that. And so our, my job is to always work for the resources that our tribe is missing. And that's what we were missing. And so it was a passion of mine to try to help these kids because oftentimes they are the ones that have received the most trauma and they're the ones trying to get through that and they need the most help trying to overcome that. And when you put them in group home type settings and they continue to feel like no one cares about them, they don't have much success in their life. So if I can lower the ACEs scores, help lower the trauma that they endure, I'm producing better Cherokee citizens for, and, and ha who have a better chance and a better future. And they deserve that. Good job. Right, thank you, Chair. Mike? I just have one question. And this may be a question that you can't answer, but um, has there been any updates on those two lawsuits, one out the one in Arkansas and one in Texas? I saw Chris here, and so again, they just limit me as far as I my... Know that. Um, and I, there were um, new filings last week, and I made myself a note earlier today to send them out, but um, no decisions on anything. Okay, thank you. Got one more question, Chair. Yeah, let me go to Sean Britton in here just a Hey, Nikki, I just mm -hmm. was following that with Dave. Um, so, what you're going to get us is the max foster kids that can go to that home. Within safety reasons, yes, sir. And you think it's six? I believe it's six. Mm -hmm. And now is that now does that include that don't include their own kids, right? That's what I'm saying. I have to look at the law because there has been a lot of changes. DHS was sued. There's a pinnacle plan. This this mm -hmm. particular family is a great family. They are. But they've got lots of kids of their own. Two and one, I think, in the military is my understanding. Right. And, uh, so that's so two in the home. If they count it, if they would count them, so they say two, so potentially we could help four. Is that how you're understanding it? 
but I don't think they count biological children anymore, so it will be four to six. But right now the Cherokee Nation just has three to four. We don't have a lot of teenagers, but like the two, that, well, I don't want to say too much, but the ones that they have helped have often been kicked out of three or four homes. That family has a heart for teenagers when most people don't want them. They do, and yeah. like I said, and I know them, they're great people. Mm -hmm. um, now we approved, was it 70,000? few months ago that sounds correct to help get that up and running mm -hmm. see at that time it seemed like it was going to be more children that, that were going to be allowed yes but because we're title 4 e certified um, and with the law that changed a little it changed a little bit of the numbers because I was wanting to go up to 12 and the tribe could have possibly gone up to that number but because Title IV E within the last couple of months changed, and again, I have to get familiar with that, but they, they changed several things in child welfare. Well, everybody's heart's in the right place. Sure, sure. Yours, ours, theirs. Right. I'm, I'm you know, 70 or 80,000. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much that might have helped an, an individual household with a foster child, some of that dispersed out, you know. so. I'm kind of on the mm -hmm. fence, but I know everybody's heart's in the right place. Sure. But if you would, when you get that to, we get that to all of us. Absolutely. Those. How many kids they can have in that home? Yeah. But I'm just telling you, I can look each one of you in the eye, and I promise you, they will house many of our older children, and they will make a huge, significant impact. I have no doubt, okay. because those children, everyone else has given up on them, and this home and those foster parents, I truly, truly know they will have a better chance than they've ever had. So I understand your concerns. It might seem like a lot of money, but to these children, it's priceless because they're given a chance that everyone else wanted to throw right, them away. Right. And I agree. And like I said, I, I as wanna, you can tell, I get I passionate. I say this one more time. I know everybody's heart's in the right place. Sure. I know these people. Sure. I know so I teach some of the kids. Right. Um, you know, I just, I just keep going back to that. You know, I know other <coughs> their own home sure have one or two maybe and you know a few thousand dollars mm -hmm. you know might could enhance that foster child's there's always services for those age groups and they're not being thrown away in a sense it's like the prodigal son these <coughs> children are ones where there are no services and no one wants them so we're spending money for the least of these of the least of these there's resources for all of those i can usually help all of those but this particular group i haven't been able to and couldn't so it's worth the extra effort because they're the ones that don't have anything else thank you mm -hmm. thank you yes sir no i think the the intent the intent's good and uh so the uh so the uh, truancy, is there a, a grant that uh, we used to receive through ICW with truancy uh, through our court systems? That would probably be, um, I'm trying to think what they call it, it was through Human Services and it was, uh, Chrissy, help me out on the name of that, that uh, Jennifer Kirby, huh? I didn't hear you. Healing to Wellness. That was under Jennifer Kirby with Human Services uh -huh. because deprived children, you're bordering into delinquent children. So all I help are deprived children. Mm -hmm. Truancy is a delinquent child who will not go to school or whose parent will not get them there. But they are never removed and put in state's custody. They are left with that parent. The parent's written a ticket and they have to show up to court. Mm -hmm. So that is a completely different department that I do not have the authority to assist. Is there an opportunity for ICW to assist in that, or is there a grants available through ICW for to assist with truancy? Oftentimes, truant children can be deprived because the parent isn't getting them to school because they're on drugs or things of that nature. So on occasion, truant children are deprived children. But like I said, the tribe only has three or four, and none of the children I have into custody, the truancy is not the issue. Its parents are on drugs. There's all kinds. So. Yeah. The overall answer to your question is probably not. You might know of something that fits in a 1% or 2% that I'm not aware of. So if you had a more direct question on the exact grant, what you're talking about, I'd be glad to yeah. look into it. Now, but I, I highly <laughs> doubt a truancy <coughs> grant belongs in Indian child welfare because my children are deprived, not delinquent. I'm mostly concerned about the service. Not, I'm not sure what the name of the grant is, but the service to our Cherokee kids because it seems to be a problem in our rural areas with, with truancy. Mm -hmm. And if the tribe could step in and maybe help out with the student purchasing an alarm clock for them or 
holding these kids accountable. Is that true? Uh, there's a there's something that we need we need to step out and let the kids and the families know that we are concerned about them. Again, sir, school. completely wrong department. I'm deprived children. What you're talking about is delinquent, so that does not fall under my purview. I think yes, I think you fit well though under ICW. It can't. I don't have the jurisdiction to help delinquent children. Only deprived. Okay. It is right. not my department. I can't make it be. I, I love that group of children too. I used to be a prosecutor and handle delinquents, but that is not what I do here at the tribe. It's okay. only deprived children. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Sir. You have a plate full. Handle that. You do it well. Thank you, sir. Answer. Yeah, we're Nikki. Well, mm -hmm. So there's there's not even a, a possibility for. I mean, they, I, man, I appreciate you bringing that up because, man, we need to form another little old work group mm -hmm. about that truancy thing. Kane and I know he hears it and I hear it, and you know a lot of the um, Delaware County, I'm sure, and all of us probably, Squaw County. But boy, I would love to to form that. Yeah. That, that is under the purview of um, AG's office. Yeah. No, AG's office handles delinquent children, so you might also check um, with them because when I worked in the AG's office, um, that is where delinquent petitions can be filed. Therefore, you can like send delinquent children to um, treatments and things like that. So the AG's office also has the authority over delinquent children, and truancy falls under delinquency. Right, and I, I didn't know if there was an angle you could use. Of course, you said there wasn't because, you know, being in education, we sometimes see, we sometimes see the kids after mm -hmm. they get out of your program. Sure. And you know, educators keep attendance, and you know, sometimes that that falls. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you, just kind of a follow up from from your department. Sure. And, sure. But yeah, if you can't, if you just can't, you can't. But mm -hmm. but yeah, thank you for bringing that up because that. I guarantee you, we we could use something like that as well as every every school district, and we used to have it. And it, it's not just coming from old hillbilly Peavine boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's people, there's lawyers call me mm -hmm. that like it. There's sure. judges, superintendents. Mm -hmm. I barely got my bachelor's. But it's a real, real deal. So, so thank you, Dave. Yeah, Let's we'll, get together we'll bring, and do we'll bring that. Yep. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. Uh -huh. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you, Nikki. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nikki. CCO, Kevin Stretch. Mm -hmm. Hello. 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 And uh, if you have any questions, I will say that uh, sadly we lost seven Cherokee speakers this last month. So. How many? Seven. It's on your report. So. Anyway, so if you have any questions about report are you ready yes oh, would you explain organizational receiving technical assistance in april cherokee nation historical society cherokee nation treasures crazy community fellowship one fire rural community initiatives have not youth and neighborhood center three rivers area community can you explain that to me i'm just what's technical assistance well, technical I mean, assistance uh, part I mean, what of what exactly? we do is capacity building and training okay. and uh, technical assistance is if we go to a community that's having a particular issue uh, we, we we help them with that uh, or if they come to one of our trainings that's specifically for capacity buildings and then we count that as technical assistance can you give me an example an example of uh, Capacity. Say fundraising, if they're having trouble with fundraising or oh. if they're having trouble with their computer system, we can help with their okay. computers or connecting to other communities. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're having trouble um, knowing what the Oklahoma Open Meetings Act mm -hmm. is, then we help them with that. Okay. So, um, you, you sent a person, two persons, a group, two, uh, or, or? Most of the time they attend training. We have every Every month we have a training mm -hmm. on Tuesdays uh, in the morning and the evening for all of board members are welcome to, and community members. Uh, and then once every quarter we have an all day Saturday training and uh, they're welcome to come there. Uh, if they're receiving grant money from CCO, 
then they're required to um, each organization to have 140 hours of training for the year to continue receiving funds. Okay, and that D, that needs a districts, right? The, the employee you attended, is that correct? Okay, all right, thank you. I just, I just have paid attention to that and I, I, did, I wasn't aware that you did all that. And, and we, we uh, also live stream that and it's uh, archived call, online call, call on, on our um, YouTube page as well. And so the large committees, communities also get an opportunity to, to uh, view that as well. And we encourage that with the at-large communities as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. You're welcome. Councilman Walken, Stick. Uh, thank you, Chair. Have we uh, ever thought about uh, reaching out to uh, stomp grounds and churches and providing some type of assistance or technical uh, training uh, for this? These churches and stomp grounds are community organizations where communities go and they they get around the fellowship. And you know some of those are, the, are stronger than some of our, our, our real communities. But uh, have you guys thought about branching out into those uh, into those those Cherokee churches and those, those stomp grounds and? You guys thought about branching out in those areas and why haven't you if you have thought about it? We, before I started working at, at CCO, um, part of the grant included uh, churches as well. And I'm not sure I can, I can ask to see, to find out information of why we stopped sponsoring churches, uh, but we used to do that and we, we no longer do that. Okay. We do help them. A lot of a lot of the board members in these small communities are church members and, and church <coughs> board members as well, uh, as well as stomp grounds. And some stomp grounds have, have reached out to us for assistance, and we have done that. We've done everything we can for them. So anyone, any Cherokee citizen that, that needs help or organization, we try to help them if we, if we can. If, we, if it's not our... Um, if it's not our area ex expertise, we find them someone in the Cherokee Nation that has that expertise or knowledge. It's a, a, what do we have to do to get churches back in, in the mix of, of funding? Because I know some churches, they have huge gospel singings, and they need an arbor, but they don't have the money to supply an arbor. Is there a, a, can, can this body right here legislate or amend policy or law to implement churches back into this and as well as put stomp grounds in there as well I, i'm not sure the answer uh as far as if what percentage of our funds come from cherokee nation versus outside grants but i will find that answer for you and get back to you on it. if you would get, get the legislation that that it was originally written and and i like to see that and see what how it's written now and maybe you should shoot, shoot us an email and we could get our legal counsel to maybe amend it to, to put something in there or maybe it's 51% of, you know, a church has got to be Cherokee or the stomp grounds or something. But I just know those churches are, are big community gathering places and, and they're, they're strong. So we need to be sure as a tribe that we keep them strong. So, all right, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted you to know that, uh, you know, that grueling trip out at <laughs> Fresno, Bakersfield, and then Susan City, uh, your staff did an amazing job. Thank they really you did. Everything flowed really smoothly. You. you were missed, but everything flowed smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> well, the bike ride starts in a couple of weeks, so. And good yeah. luck on that. Yeah, yeah, we're all rooting for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Kevin, just want to commend you and your staff for the first meeting there at Belfont Nyka School for bringing your your staff there and doing a fantastic job it was a it was a success to have everyone there. I know it took everybody working together to, to pull that off and had a good turnout so just keep me informed on the next one I'll do whatever I can to help you guys out I, uh, on a similar note after the parade last weekend we rode 45 miles through Sequoia and Adair County and some of the young riders were going, I don't even know where we are, where are we? 
And so we went through Bell and Night Cut and had uh, bologna sandwiches at Belfont and oh, came back through Cherry Tree and they're like, I, I have not seen one thing that I'm familiar with. And I said, well, that's part of your education on this ride because, you know, we get language and history and now a little geo geography. Yeah, that's a trail of tears there. <laughs> Okay, Kevin. Thank you. No old business. I have. Uh, I would like to do a comment. I should just like to make one short comment. I mean, you know, we sit here as councilmen, and, and people sit in that chair, and I know sometimes it's uncomfortable. I mean, I and we ask a lot of questions, but I I want you to know that we understand that a lot of the times when we're asking questions, those questions really aren't aimed at you, and you know, there's other people making decisions. And, but, you know, we are needing to get to the bottom of some uh, pressing questions. So, you know, you happen to be up there, you happen to be taking the arrows, but in the end it's about whoever's making those uh, decisions well above you. I want you to, I just wanted to say that, that it's not personally aimed at, you know, you're sitting in that chair. Sometimes it's, you know, you're put in a difficult situation to answer for other people. And I commend uh, you for sitting there and doing that. I know it's difficult, but you know we each uh, do what we have to do. So just wanted to say that. Okay. Yep. Uh, the next meeting is technically scheduled for Monday, June 5th, 4 p.m. Any other announcements? Bob. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I'm trying to remember the date now. Uh, we actually had the uh, Cherokee United Driller Stadium scheduled. Uh, two weeks ago on May the 3rd, but due to rain, they canceled the event. So we are tentatively rescheduling that for July the 19th. I wanted to make you guys aware of that. As we get closer, we'll get our packet of tickets and I'll set aside some for the council. Uh, but I did want to brag on, you guys were bragging on uh, ICW a little bit uh, today. And Sally Foster and uh, Hetty and her crew always go to those events. So you will see them there that night recruiting foster families as well during that event as well. So just a reminder, uh, July 19th will be in the evening on a Friday night as, as planned before. Hopefully it won't rain and it won't be 2,000 degrees that night. So. <coughs> it's also Redbird Smith's birthday ceremony. <laughs> but we always conflict somewhere, just pick us. Roll the tie. Roll the tie. Uh, hey, he wants to adjourn. Hey, Chairman. I like that. Uh, we got Mr. Mr. Uh, Poindexter. Stay up, Mr. Poindexter. This young man's uh, from Stillwell, and he's wanting to learn more about the Cherokee Nation and our government. And he's sitting here the whole entire day hearing us uh, discuss everything. So we, we commend you for that. And thank you for being here. All right, thank you. 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 Thank you.